Christmas and Happy New Year as we have uh, turned the page, or getting ready to turn the page. This Bible study, whenever you're watching it, is uh, slated for December 30th, uh, but we are approaching the new year, so why not say Happy New Year? Many looking forward to it. Um, not because this last year was bad. I know that's that surprising to hear, but no day, no year, uh, no moment of our life is bad because God is with us. And because God is with us, it means that he is showering upon us everything we need for this body and life. He has promised to do so, and he continues to do so. And ultimately, our focus is not anyhow on this life today, here and now, but rather our life with him forever. We look forward to being taken out of this life and to go to heaven above. But until that takes place, we continue the study of God's Word. Uh, today, we are on the new portals of prayer, different uh, color for us. It's got a, a blue tint to it. Now, for January through March 2021, we are going to be focusing on at uh, Good Shepherd uh, for January the 3rd, the circumcision and name of Jesus. So we're going to use that prayer found in the back of the portals of prayer as we begin our study today. Dear Jesus, you came to obey the law in our place. From the first shedding of your blood at your circumcision to the last shedding of your blood on the cross, you fulfilled the law in our place and earned forgiveness and eternal life for us all. We thank you for this great gift. Remind us of all these blessings whenever we speak your wonderful name, which means the Lord saves. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. And yes, uh, we are still in the Christmas glow for sure. Jesus born in Bethlehem, the Word made flesh, as we talked about last time in John chapter 1, uh, 1 through 14. But why did Jesus come? That's what we're focusing on today. Why did Mary rejoice that God has brought forth the Savior, the Savior of the world, precisely because we need saving. And how did God determine to save us, and what is he saving us from? That is the emphasis and the focus as we think about uh, the circumcision and name of Jesus in Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 21, looking at the name and the circumcision of Jesus. As we heard in the prayer already, Jesus comes to do what the law requires. Remember, our sin means that we cannot or do not keep the law perfectly. That's what sin is. And the way that God chose to save us is to send his son to keep the law in our place in his perfection, suffer and die, so that by his perfect suffering and death we receive his righteousness, which is the forgiveness of sins, and therefore we are saved. So Jesus has work to do uh, for us. But this picture is a lovely one where Jesus uh, being presented uh, eight days old uh, for his circumcision and his naming. So we have rules and laws governing our citizenship. Uh, there are a lot uh, on uh, the government uh, website. Uh, this is just one, uh, children born in wedlock. So there's a lot of variations on this based upon uh, the mother and father's uh, circumstance uh, when you were born. But let's say children born in wedlock. And also let's say a child of two U.S citizen parents. Again, there's a lot of variation on that as well. So a child born outside of the United States and its outlying possessions acquires citizenship at birth if at the time of birth. So remember, a child born outside of the United States is just one of the possibilities. Um, and a lot of this has to do with those who are in the military, uh, those who are serving overseas. What do they do? How does that their child become a United States citizen when they're born in a different country. So, 
this is they are U.S. citizens uh, when uh, they are both of the child's parents are U.S. citizens already. Okay, and at least one parent has resided in the United States or one of its outlying possessions. So this would determine a U.S. citizen uh, under this criteria. Now we're talking about what it is to be uh, a part of the promise given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that goes to why was Jesus then brought to the temple eight days after his birth? The text is very simple and, and concise uh, for this Sunday. Uh, Luke 2, 1 verse, verse 21. And the angel, at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus. So we have two things taking place. Remember, this is the circumcision and naming of the child. The name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Okay, where does this all take place? How does this all work? Now, we look at Genesis 15, 10 to give us the reminder of the covenant, the promise that God gave to Abraham. Remember that God chose Abraham and his descendants by which he would place his name and upon which the Savior would become. Along with that was this covenant of circumcision a, a way for God to know and this, to set aside, set apart this people for his own, as his own people. And this physical mark of circumcision would be that reminder that they have been set apart, chosen by God, and are in this relationship of promise. Genesis 17, 10. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. Jesus brought in the temple at his birth for circumcision. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Luke 2, 21, at the end of eight days. Every male throughout your generations, whether born in your house or bought with your money from any foreigner who is not of your offspring. So Jesus is circumcised according to the law of God, the law given uh, to Abraham and all his descendants uh, to mark him as, as one who is a part of this covenant promise. Uh, to fulfill the law that God has given to his people. Jesus is fully man. You know, he is a male child. And so what is taking place to him is what would happen to all these male children uh, because of this covenant related to uh, Abraham, to God's people. So when Jesus comes into this world, everything that was required uh, by uh, God for his people, even though Jesus is God and man, for Jesus' humanity, he was going to keep so as to be faithful to God and do exactly what the law requires so as to be the sacrifice necessary to provide forgiveness, life, and salvation. So Jesus is faithful, his parents are faithful uh, to God's word. It's not a surprise then that God chose Mary and Joseph, uh, mother, and now, you know, the earthly father of Jesus to raise him, to take care of him, because they understood God's law and wanted to be faithful to it. Galatians 4, 4 to 5 adds this, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. Jesus born under the law, taking on flesh and blood subject to his parents. I mean, just think about the Ten Commandments. Think about the regulations that God has established for his people uh, throughout the Old Testament. Jesus was going to be faithful to these, to these laws, uh, and his parents were faithful to these laws, so as to complete them and therefore bring the gospel the good news of salvation that comes through his sacrifice uh, for us, bringing forgiveness and life and salvation. 
okay, to redeem us. So as we think about the name of Jesus, or the name given uh, to the son of Mary and Joseph, the name Jesus, what does your name mean? And what does Jesus' name mean? Uh, oftentimes, our parents put some thought into our name. Uh, you may want to research that if you don't already know. It could be that they chose your name because it was another family member's name, to carry on uh, that name, naming within your families. When I think of my uh, parents' families, uh, the women uh, of my uh, dad's side all have the letter J uh, beginning their names. And uh, all the male children uh, have the letter D uh, to begin their names. Make a way for my grandmother and grandfather having a lot of children to, to not forget uh, their names. Some have biblical names. Uh, some are related to you know, other uh, people, other things that have taken place in their lives. Uh, names have gotten, well, they can just be about anything uh, today that people choose and that people uh, want for their child. Remember, uh, if you're expecting a child, though, um, or you know someone expecting a child, remember that name sticks with them uh, throughout their life. So while it may be uh, fun and cute uh, at a certain point, it may not be one that they want when they're an adult. Uh, so keep that in mind uh, when you get that uh, chance to look at that. So Matthew 121 uh, is this reminder uh, to Joseph uh, that while uh, Mary is pregnant, don't fear, don't worry. Uh, this is an act of God. Uh, she's not pregnant by another man, in other words. Uh, which would have caused uh, Joseph to divorce her for sure um, because she would have been unfaithful to him. But what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Therefore, uh, don't worry. And so Matthew 121 reminds us of this uh, to Joseph. She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Again, why did Jesus come? Not just to be born in Bethlehem. That does not save us okay it's a fulfillment of the promise of the savior who is to come but the action of saving has not yet taken place but we know it will because god is faithful but we have to get to that point don't we so jesus a uh, name means savior and jesus christ uh, the anointed one the chosen one so oftentimes when i give the lord's supper i say take eat uh, this is the body of Christ Jesus given for you. I like to say, uh, by using Christ Jesus, the anointed, the chosen one to save uh, when I give the host uh, to our membership. Um, but remember what Jesus' name means. As you think about your names and its significance, uh, so maybe, you know, think about your name, maybe it means joyful or, or uh, peaceful or whatever the case may be. You know, hopefully you live up to uh, a name that has that kind of that kind of lifestyle attached to it. You know, that you're not kind of the Grinch and if your name means joyful or happy. Uh, Jesus uh, means Savior, uh, a, one who will save. And so we remember uh, what he has come to do. And that's why I wanted to bring about the second article uh, explanation of our creed. Uh, when we confess in our creeds the Ap Apostles, Athanasian, and Nicene Creed, we confess the Trinity. I believe in God the Father, I believe in God the Son, I believe in God the Holy Spirit. When we say I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in God the Son, uh, what does that mean? And that also gives us a further detail about his name. And what I wanted to think about uh, today, these are, you know, his life and what he came to do and what he did do. But what does it mean that Jesus was crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell, and rose again from the dead? This is the second article explanation we remember from our catechism. I believe that Jesus Christ, right, the anointed to say, is true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin, Mary is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, 
purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil. He is my Savior, not with gold or silver. How did he do it? But with his holy, precious blood. Holy, without sin. Precious blood, innocent, without sin, suffering, and death. True God, true man, under the law, fulfilling the law in our place, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. And we conclude by saying this is most certainly true. Jesus being circumcised, the name given to Jesus at his circumcision, Jesus, uh, which the angel already told uh, Joseph that's what he would be named, is certainly appropriate. Uh, because that is just why he has come into this world. There's no need Jesus for Jesus to come unless he is acting for us. We remain dead in our sins, dead to God, without Jesus coming for us. So why is it important to know Jesus? So, you know, we have Jesus born at Christmas. Uh, we have Jesus in his ministry, Jesus of the Bible. Why is it important to know Jesus as your Savior, as your Lord? Why do we want other people to know Jesus as Savior and Lord? Well, simply put, unless you believe in him, you cannot be saved. If you do not believe in him, you could not be saved. And we talk about believing in him. It's more than just that he was a good man, a good prophet, that he was just a man, or that he's just God. But he is both God and man. Uh, he, is, he came into this world uh, to live as we live, yet without sin. He suffered and died and rose again from the dead. He lives and reigns to all eternity. This is our faith. Our faith believes and knows Jesus as our Savior. Why do we need to know who Jesus is? Well, look at what Philippians 2 says. So that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We need to know who Jesus is because we are going to die. And we think about the words spoken uh, to Mary, spoken to the shepherds when the angels came and announced to Joseph, Fear not. Fear not. When you know the name of Jesus, and you know who he is, there's no need to fear. Because even our greatest enemy, as scripture reminds us, death has been swallowed up in victory. And so today we begin Jesus' ministry, really. It doesn't seem like a ministry because he's not out preaching or teaching or healing. But his ministry is about keeping the law as well in our place. And today we celebrate his name, Jesus, the one who saves. Jesus Christ, the anointed to save. May we always praise this Jesus. So again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, may you be reminded that Jesus is your Savior. He is always with you.